have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And we do have lots of news for you this week. It doesn't stop. Not for a while. Hawaii has uh, just opened marriage to same sex couples. It's Obama week in <laughs> same sex marriage because this week it's Hawaii and Illinois. Uh, Illinois also passed a marriage bill, and that's going to be signed next week and will go into effect June 1st, although there are maneuvers attempted to make it happen earlier. And we're going to tell you about one Illinois representative who left the deathbed of her son to vote for the bill. Very moving. And the Employment Non-Discrimination Act passed in the U.S. Senate, uh, but there are dim prospects in the House, but I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, but then the question is, do we want it? Because the controversial religious exemption uh, uh, is still in it, that the ACLU and we and many others... Hope the New York removed. Times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a tra this is a horrible story. A transgender uh, student in Oakland was set afire on a bus for wearing a skirt. The skirt was actually set mm -hmm. on fire. Uh, and that's as we're about to celebrate the Transgender Day of Remembrance. We'll give you details about all of that and other related stories. Uh, in New Jersey, the, uh, a court has upheld the so-called gay conversion therapy ban for minors, uh, beating back the right-wing challenge. The president of the American Bar Association has withdrawn from speaking at a New York conference on investing in Russia under pressure from gay leaders. And in fact, they've actually had to cancel where it's going to be because <laughs> the law firm that was hosting it ain't doing it anymore. They're hiding in a basement so we, now. If you we know got, where they're going to be, let us know. We got the Ruskies on the run. <laughs> sort of. And more details on the latest from Russia. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister of Ireland has come out for same-sex marriage. And the Prime Minister of Luxembourg is out. <laughs> this is the third out gay head of state in Europe. And the First Lady of Zambia has come out for LGBT rights in uh, her country where uh, being gay is illegal. And I'm going to review the great Michael Gambon and Eileen Atkins and Samuel Beckett's uh, pl play in New York and a new play uh, uh, about politics in Texas. And we'll tell you about a couple of other entertainment uh, news things, too. But we start, as we so often have in the last couple of years, with marriage. And we start... Uh, Soon this... it will be over in this country. I, uh, we're only up to 16 states in the District of Columbia. we got 34 to go. Yeah, but it's going like a rocket ship. <laughs> to the Supreme Court. <laughs> but it starts way west this week in the Aloha state of Hawaii. The House there passed the marriage bill 30 to 19. Then the Senate had to pass it again because it had certain kinds of uh, new amendments, uh, 19 to 4. Uh, and it goes into effect on December the 2nd. Yep, the governor happily signed it. Evan Wolfson of Freedom to Marry, who uh, was part of the start of all this 20 years ago in Hawaii, went to Hawaii for the bill signing because this was yeah. meaningful to the, him. The case in Hawaii started, I believe, in 93. Yeah. And with a guy named Dan Foley, then... Uh, As the lawyer. The, the, right, and then Evan got on board. But uh, back to the vote in the House, uh, it was very moving listening to the testimony. Uh, <laughs> they, but except, several thousand people testifying. Except for lesbian representative Joe Jordan. She's an out lesbian, and she uh, was the first out gay or lesbian person to vote no on a same-sex marriage bill she says in a legislature she says Christians showed her love and gays haven't now apparently I've read a lot about her she's tied in with a political faction that wanted to slow this down for their own political reasons yeah. and then she ends up voting no yeah everybody thought all right so she's working with that faction to slow it down and and throw amendments at it or whatever but surely when it comes to the final vote on the bills she's a lesbian she'll vote yes on marriage equality but she voted no, and and she really sounded quite heartfelt about the fact that, uh, you know, 
these evangelical Christians who lined up by the thousands to plead with the legislature not to do this and ruin their culture should be paid attention to, and we should take our time with this and and the heck with everyone else who's uh, supporting equality. Don't worry, Joe. The Congress is giving it away to the evangelicals in the <laughs> Employment Non-Discrimination Act, much about which later. And uh, I'm sure you'll be part of the lawsuit that, that is being brought against the bill by the right wing in Hawaii who say, remember 20 years ago when the legislature passed, the, uh, first of all, the court said, it is unconstitutional to forbid uh, same-sex couples from marrying. And the legislature then passed a constitutional amendment that said we are changing the Constitution oh, so that the legislature... Th didn't, didn't the people vote for that? They no. voted, didn't they? No, I thought the people voted for a constitutional amendment to yes, allow the yes. legislature to regulate marriage. Yes, See, yes. this is a case yes. where people did not pass an amendment against marriage. Right. They just said, let's give the legislature the power to do it, which they immediately did, yes. banning us from it. Yeah, so uh, the right wing is now going to court to say, well, when the people passed this constitutional amendment, what they meant was no. same-sex couples could not marry. No. But they are wrong and they will lose this I'm court sure challenge. the people who voted for it were not happy with us getting married, but that's not what they voted for. Right. All right, and President Obama's happy. Yes. So, let's go to but Illinois. But he's overjoyed about what happened in Illinois, which actually was voted on before Hawaii, but is currently scheduled yeah, to we, go into effect after Hawaii, so we're doing so that So here's second. the development. We've told you, we told you about uh, uh, Illinois last week, but I mean, uh, let's tell you about the developments. There is a move to take up a new bill. This bill, the way it was done, means that it can't go in, the law can't go into effect till June 1st. So there's a move to take up a new bill in January that would go into effect 30 days from then, uh, ra rather than the June 1st, but it might not be so easy. Well, the reason it couldn't go into effect until June for this, the way it was passed in this session, was to have it to go into effect earlier in this particular kind of special session, you had to get more votes. 70 than instead of 60. Exactly. And so, we only got 61. Exactly. So we, had, we put the June uh, start date on it. But if they pass it again in January with, I think, 60 votes again or then. Or later, because they might meet later. Yes, but whatever they do, and if they pass it again then, then it's a different kind of session uh, so they a, can do a the 30-day rule. And yeah. the lawsuit continues there. Well, because, they, because we do not have all of our marriage rights there. The, uh, the parties to the lawsuit were all set to cancel the lawsuit, declare it moot, and then they said, wait a minute, this thing is still up in the air because it doesn't start for another right. seven months. That's a and long time to wait for your federal rights. Exactly. So we're going to keep the uh, lawsuit hot and maybe the court will decide that marriage can start sooner. So the very heart-rending story was about Re Representative Naomi Jacobson. She left the bedside of her son Garrett, who's 46, who was dying of a neurodegenerative disease called PICS. He died 10 minutes before she got back to the nursing home, but she issued a statement saying equal protection under the law is important to everyone in my family, including Garrett. I know my son was proud of my decision. Absolutely, but heartbreaking but, having her, to not be at your son's bedside when he died. Well, she'd been with him, yes. spending a lot of time with him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, uh, other states, other uh, developments on this in Arkansas. Oh, well, well, one more thing oh, yeah. on, on Illinois. Sure. Representative Sam Ying, uh, Yingling of Round Lake Beach proposed to his partner, Lowell Jaffe, in front of their two young sons and Governor Pat Quinn at the celebration at the governor's mansion after the vote. Very That's sweet. That's sweet. Very sweet. Uh, and uh, Pat Quinn is delaying his signing of the bill until November 20th because he wants to have it be a big, uh, you know, group. And then the story about this, by the way, the Catholic Conference, the Catholic Conference, which was the big opponent, said we didn't have the reinforcements that the other side had. Uh, and there's a lot of back backroom <laughs> dealing. I mean, the mayor, mayor, uh, uh, you know, Rahm Emanuel leaned yeah. on one of yeah. uh, one of the delegates who had voted no to. He even voted no to civil unions. This guy John D'Amico, and and the mayor got him to vote for marriage. Um, Here's my favorite footnote to the meeting of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops this last weekend. They're sitting around discussing how they operate and what their agenda is and everything. And one guy, one of these bishops, says. How come the other side has this great slogan of marriage equality? <laughs> <laughs> it's two words. We keep talking about 
marriage should be between one man and one woman. That's too many words. Can't we come up with something that's better? Well, j just a couple of more notes on the politics, because people should understand this for their own states. You know, they had a lot of problem. Uh, you know, they, they, they didn't really appeal to African-American legislatures very well in the first round. Absolutely. So they hired black lobbyists to patch things up mm -hmm. and uh, who felt pressured about this. Also, you mentioned the Catholics. Cardinal George fell silent during this latest debate. Uh, I guess he got the memo from the Vatican. He was a very big anti. And uh, Rick yeah. Garcia of the Civil Rights Agenda, which helped pass the bill, he went around saying, look, you vote for this thing, I'll carry your petitions uh, in, this, uh, in the next Rick election. Rick has always been a, a fantastic you, hero in Illinois for many, many, many years. There and are, he, they try to cut him out yes, of a lot of stuff. Yes, but there are no shortcuts to this. No. Can't, people don't just do things because it's the right thing. No. And Speaker Madigan uh, flipped about five of the ten members, which he put an effort into. Yes, when he finally decided he could. Yeah. You know, this all became a question of can you? Well, they, they really gambled with the vote because yes. at the end they didn't yes. have every single vote and they figure if we put it on the floor, people, somebody's going to come along and do it. It puts more pressure on Same people. Same thing happened in New York, didn't it? Uh, by the time they got, yeah, I, yes. Yes, one, in one, the Senate, one, yeah. Uh, one Republican got up and yeah. said he was doing it and then yeah. everybody relaxed. And, exactly. Yeah. All right, in Arkansas, uh, the Attorney General has uh, approved the wording for a referendum uh, for approving same-sex marriage. They are going to begin gathering signatures for this. They need 78,000 plus. They want to put it on the ballot in 2016. They already have a referendum scheduled next year, 2014, to repeal the state's constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. And they have a lawsuit seeking same-sex marriage in 2004, 75 yes. percent of our Kansans approved the anti-gay amendment, but that's a long time ago in gay years. Exactly. The world is changing. And in Idaho, four lesbian couples have stepped forward to file a lawsuit for marriage rights. They're all from Boise. Uh, you know, there are a lot of states that we ruled out as possibilities where there's well, we, a lot of movement. We got the law on yeah. our side now. Yeah. Uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, are we going to that? Yes. Uh, three couples. Uh, well, from... actually, we, we had this uh, picture. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, let's do that first. Well, yeah. there are two Pennsylvania stories. And the first is that uh, coming up in uh, on November 18th, the Reverend Frank Schaefer, of the, who is a Methodist minister, is going on trial in Methodist court. It now, always amuses me that these uh, denominations have their own uh, trial. Yeah, it used uh, to be called setups. the Inquisition. <laughs> and the consequences were dire. Now, he married, he performed a marriage for his son. In uh, 2007 is, in he, Massachusetts. And nobody complained, but yeah. somebody complained last year. Yep. So now they're having a trial for him. And the thing is, he's unrepentant. They said, hey... We won't do the trial if you just say you won't do it again. And he said, I'm not going to say I won't do it again. He said three of my four kids are gay. I may <laughs> want to perform their marriages, too. But uh, 50 other clergy members uh, did a supportive symbolic ceremony of union. There's Frank on the right and his son, who he performed the marriage ceremony for on the left, uh, in at a Methodist church in Philadelphia. So this... on. Um, November 18th in Spring City, Pennsylvania. Uh, this trial is going to happen. If you happen to be in the area there, go. And he says, what is my crime? I blessed two people who loved each other. Uh, and also in Pennsylvania, there are three couples from Easton, Pennsylvania, which is right on the border with New Jersey, and they held a demonstration about marriage equality, and they marched across a bridge from uh, Pennsylvania to New Jersey to get married in New Jersey, and there was a local, a lot of local news coverage of this, and we have one of the local news reports to tell us about that. Newlywed couples are celebrating their marriages tonight. They hope to send a message. The couples are from Pennsylvania, but they had to go to New Jersey to get legally married. Megan Packer is here with more. Megan. Robin Wendy, they took a short walk to exchange vows, but are hoping for big strides in Pennsylvania's marriage laws. But not everyone agrees. You can see it from right here. You can see New Jersey. So close to Pennsylvania, yet in the eyes of people at this rally in Easton,
further along when it comes to marriage equality. This is where change has to start. It has to start at the local level. Just this week, Illinois passed marriage equality. Hawaii is on the verge of passing marriage equality. New Jersey recently passed marriage equality. And we're hoping for a win here in Pennsylvania. As far as I can see, there's no support uh, to change Pennsylvania. Act. Legislation to repeal Pennsylvania's Defense of Marriage Act was introduced in September and has been in the Judiciary Committee, but not everyone supports the idea. This legislature is not going to embrace or pass uh, something that cares at the bedrock of our culture, and that's traditional marriage. Still, the group in Easton made its way across state lines to bridge the gap. Go into New Jersey and we're going to get married. Three couples were tying the knot. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And with that, all of you as witnesses, I pronounce that they are legally married. When they cross that bridge, they will have access to numerous federal benefits and no state benefits here in Pennsylvania. And that's wrong and that's watching and fighting today. We really would to be married in Pennsylvania, the state where we work, pay taxes, own two homes. And in Washington today, the Senate approved a bill that would outlaw discrimination against gay, bisexual, and transgender people in the workplace, but it faces an uphill battle in the House. Wendy. So uh, we can go out of business. The <laughs> local news has got it yep. covered. And of course, to everybody in the country, if you can't get married in your own state, you can get federal rights by getting married somewhere else. Yes, it's become really important to do that. Uh, there's a real concrete uh, advantage to going elsewhere and getting married. Including the fact that the Obama administration is opening health benefits to the children of federal employees. Well, this isn't about marriage. It's about domestic partnership, but live in states where marriage is not an option. It takes effect January 1st, but uh, adult partners, domestic partners, are not eligible for spousal benefits. Okay. Uh, in Indiana, there's a huge fight going on about whether or not they will pass a state constitutional m amendment against same-sex marriage. They already have a law against it, so, you know, they What see protection the is that? <laughs> Trust me, the constitutional amendment won't protect you either. But everybody's uh, signing up for one side or the other, and the Indianapolis City Council voted 22 to 6 to oppose the state constitutional amendment. And the Republican amendment. mayor, George, uh, Greg... Ballard came on board. In Florida, you know, I, one thing that is again being used to try to discredit us here and abroad, particularly abroad, is the Regnerus study, so called, uh, by the Texas. Uh, it says we're bad parents, bad it, parents. It was a completely bogus study. It Awful. was It was discredited almost the moment it was published. Well, it was published by a, a journal put out by the University of Central Florida, and our people have brought a lawsuit against them for uh, publishing this, and a judge in Florida ruled this week that the university must release all the documents related to its publication of the study. So we're going to see a lot of uh, emails going back and forth saying, ah, we're really going to get them with this. What and... happened to the freedom to lie? <laughs> I think that's alive and well. All right. Here's a, here's a nice little story. The gay son, we have a picture of him, of slain uh, San Francisco Mayor George Moscone, Jonathan Moscone, who's 49 years old, uh, who was the artistic director of the Shakespeare Theater. We have a picture of them. Uh, married uh, his long-term partner, Francis Carbonaro, uh, 46, an attorney, and they did it on the balcony of City Hall, and it was performed by Mayor Willie Brown. We don't have that picture. Maybe we don't. Okay, they got there. Married. They there are. There they are. That's okay. that's the Moscone boy okay. <laughs> at 49 on the left. And as long as we're getting those pictures up, let's also congratulate Meredith Baxter and uh, you know uh, family ties. Thank you. And her partner of seven years, Nancy Locke, who are also engaged to marry. It is the fourth marriage for Meredith, <laughs> but the one she really wants. <laughs> As opposed to the previous one. Okay. And in Corpus Christi, Texas, Nikki Aruga, Aragus uh, marries William Lloyd. Uh, Nikki is a 
transgender woman who was married to a firefighter oh, yes. in Texas. He died suddenly. And she had her uh, reassignment surgery after they were married. Uh, he knew all about it. Uh, they were very open and happy and had a loving uh, relationship. And uh, the courts in Texas would not let her inherit his survivor benefits because they said it, their marriage was a same-sex marriage because they would not uh, acknowledge her gender reassignment surgery. Right. So then uh, she finally goes through all that and gets nothing or whatever and uh, develops a new relationship and she goes to try to marry her new partner and the courts in Houston will not uh, accept her uh, new birth certificate, passport, and driver's license. What do you have to have? Oh, and this is Texas, of course. Exactly. They're not even letting the former Speaker of the House vote. So she went with him to Corpus Christi, where these documents were accepted. Yes. She was acknowledged she as found who true she love. is. And they're married. Congratulations. They seem like a nice couple. Yeah. Okay. All right. Other news. Well, uh, the, Enda. the big news was that the for the first time uh, in the Senate, uh, they passed the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, mm -hmm. and it was 64 to 32. Yeah. And it included a, a good number of Republicans, including John McCain, uh, voting for it. Um, uh, Ten Republicans voted for it. Thirty-two vo Republicans voted against it. Uh, their absent were one Democrat and three Republicans. McCain voted for it and Flake, his fellow uh, Arizona senator, both of them, and Murkowski finally showed up to vote for four it. Four of the seven Mormons in the Senate voted for it. Harry Reid, Tom Udall, Orrin Hatch, and Dean Heller of Nevada. Uh, well, the Mormons are, are now on board with ENDA. They still hate marriage, there but are, they're on board with ENDA. There are ten Mormons in the House, and they're all Republicans. Yeah. Now, Jared Polis... Who's oh, the, so is Orrin Hatch. Right. Jared Polis, who's out gay from Colorado, representative, he says it can pass in the House if it gets to the floor. Uh, he, noting that slightly less than a quarter of the Republicans in the Senate voted for it, it, it would pass with between 20 and 40 votes, he says. They're trying to do it like they did the Violence Against Women Act. Uh, and which, Don't Ask, Don't Which tell. did include LGBT protections. Yep. Uh, it's got 196 co-sponsors. It needs 218 votes for Look, passage. It's the same story we've now seen for several years in the Congress. This stuff could pass if Boehner would let it come to the floor. The, well, the, the Republicans are the, split. The committee won't, won't hold a hearing on it. And Paula says a discharge petition is a possibility. That means people, everybody yeah, signs and on. Others say that a discharge petition is not a possibility, and they some say add it to the defense appropriation and, again, uh, and others say no. And Paula says also, as many of us say, that if this doesn't go through, and even if it does go through, the president should issue uh, an executive order covering all federal contractors, right. which would cover what twenty-five percent of the em employment in the United States. At least, at least. And uh, it would be a great thing. But here's the other thing. Uh, as the, we don't like the bill as it is right now, A, because it only covers employment, B, because it only covers employers of more than 15 people, and C, because it has a very large religious exemption that says any Let's employee... Let's read it to you. Uh, corporations, it excludes corporations, associations, educational institutions, or institutions of learning or societies that are exempt Un, from the religious discrimination provisions of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and it doesn't apply to the armed forces. But the difference here is, yes, we, we're not trying to make churches like, you know, ordain women, gay people, or whatever, if they don't want to do that. But if you say the now, because they're covered for that purpose, that now they'll be able to fire anybody who works for a hospital or a school, the janitor, a secretary, a teacher who no doesn't matter, do religion. No matter how much that institution gets in federal funds, uh, a hospital or a, a it's school. Terrible. Uh, it's terrible. So, so this is not good to begin with. It's then... It's where we would be giving away a very big principle, plus... It means that it would kind of overrule a lot of our local civil rights acts that do cover these things. Exactly. We don't want this, folks. You know, some, I got emails from some people pushing back on this. Why aren't you happier about ENDA? Why are you criticizing ENDA? Because it's a bad bill. And here's the other thing. If we have to go through all these maneuvers in the House to get them to consider it, right. they're likely to add more exemptions for uh, religious belief.
They're never satisfied. No. Uh, and why so, should they be? Why should they be? Right. They can get away with this stuff. Right. So read they, up on... And folks, all we're asking for, all we're asserting here, is that, yes, we believe in some religious exemptions. Every category under the human rights law is, has a religious exemption. But we want the same as everybody else. Race, religion, uh, You sex, should not everything. be able to be fired from your job for characteristics that have nothing to do with the performance of your job. That's the idea. If you are doing a good job, you should be able to keep your job. And if you're not doing a good job, then they should have the right to uh, get rid of you. Right. Or retrain you. Right. All right. In, uh, and, as, and as our friend Rex Wagner said, almost all these discrimination cases are by places that are, you know, vaguely religiously affiliated anyway these days. Well, in uh, New Mexico, a photography studio, Elaine Photography, there which was uh, told by a court in New Mexico that they could not refuse to serve same-sex couples on their, the grounds of their religious beliefs because they're a public accommodation. They're a business doing business and they can't discriminate. Uh, they have appealed that ruling to the Supreme Court. They're saying that to force them to serve same-sex couples is compelled speech. They're right. trying to redefine the terms well, of this. Well, th they lost under the New Mexico anti-discrimination statute. Maybe they yeah. wouldn't lose if end the past. Yes, because there is no other federal uh, statute. Right. And, uh, and the states are forbidden now to uh, go beyond what the federal statute is. Are you done with is. marriage? Yes. Okay. Uh, in Virginia, Governor-elect Terry McAuliffe says he will restore the executive order on LGBT rights that was eliminated by Governor Bob McConnell. And he thanked HRC, uh, the Human Rights Campaign, for sending eight organizers to the state on his behalf and said they were on the ground for months and they brought in a lot of other volunteers from uh, the District of Columbia in Virginia. And he squeaked out a victory. Yes, he did. Uh, against uh, the, you know, the, the anti this he guy, Ken Cuccinelli, who was a horror oh, show. Uh, but McAuliffe supports marriage rights, uh, but there's a Republican supermajority in the legislature, and that's going to continue to be a problem for us in Virginia. In, in New Jersey, the statute prohibiting conversion therapy for minors was upheld in court. Uh, this is in federal court. Summary judgment. And they're looking to do this in the District of Columbia now yep. as well. There's a bill in New York, but it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. In Maryland, uh, they have a hot race for governor next year, and there are three major Democratic candidates, one of whom is out lesbian Heather Miser. I'm guessing on the pronunciation, M-I-Z-E-U-R. And she has now picked as her lieutenant governor running mate uh, Reverend Delman Coates, who is a progressive uh, African-American minister who was very instrumental in supporting uh, same-sex marriage rights in Maryland, which, you know, passed and now it's legal there. Big battle uh, going on uh, between conservative black churches in Maryland and the progressive ministers who got together. And he is now going to be her uh, running mate candidate for lieutenant governor. Interesting. And we will follow that race. Okay, uh, in, in uh, California, uh, right-wing uh, politico Frank Schubert has, uh, claims he's submitted enough signatures, about 100,000 more than required, to provoke a vote next year to repeal the Transgender Students uh, Rights Act that was passed this year. Yes, the marriage people who are losing these days are yeah. anti-marriage are moving on to this transgender issue and it's, it's just really just to keep them in business, keep their little pol political operations and consulting things in business playing on people's fears and hatreds and uh, misunderstandings. And years ago they moved from abortion to us when uh, abortion started running out as a way for them to well, raise money. Well, they're still... Well, they've gone back to that now. They've had a resurgence yes. on that, but for a while we were the substitute for that yes. uh, when, when they were losing on that. But next week is the Transgender Day of Remembrance on November 20th. Uh, a growing and very moving uh, event because what it does is uh, is remember and honor uh, the transgender people who've been murdered in the previous year and and raise these issues in significant ways. If you want to look for events in your area, you can go to transgender 
D O R Day of Remembrance dot yeah. org, transgender D O R dot org. Um, and as that's happening, we note stories like uh, Texas. yeah, in in Texas, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center and the Human Rights Campaign have reached out to a school called, uh, well, the Laferia Texas School District to warn them that they're not allowed to do what they've done, which is to tell a transgender male student, Jaden Laredo, that he cannot wear a, a tux in his yearbook picture. The, the school said this is against community standards and said you have to wear a dress or a blouse or a drape. What do you care? This is for, this is a First Amendment case. Actually, it's you know not even a gay case or a transgender case. It's a First Amendment case. It's really horrible. All right, and then there's and really horrible is the hate crime that occurred in Oakland, uh, California. Uh, we have a picture of Sasha Fleischman, a senior at Maybeck High School, who was set afire, uh, skirt set afire while riding a bus by a guy named Richard Thomas, 16, who told police he, he I'm homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that's what the police said. Sasha's mom says that her son, who was wearing a kilt-like skirt, identifies as non-binary or agender. Uh, the perpetrator's grandmother said her son did it as a joke, uh, is not a bad person. <laughs> Other passengers aided Sasha, whose skirt had been set afire uh, while he, and this is while he was asleep. Yeah. This coward did this. Um, and the he's going to require massive skin grafting. Yeah, really badly injured. But the the nice part of the story is that students and staff at the school are really supportive, and all came to school wearing skirts. That that was a terrific uh, ending to this story. Yes, but, I it mean, was. The, but it's not over for Sasha. No. Uh, in, I'm looking to see, okay. Uh, also in California, <laughs> it, it, amazing that this has come up again. Last year, the uh, community, the Vietnamese community, told the gay Vietnamese group that they could not march in the annual Tet Parade. Yes. Uh, and so, but they said they'd talk to them and they'd work on it, but well, guess what? The uh, gay Vietnamese went back to the parade committee and uh, the committee said, nope, not this year either. 47 to 21, you are excluded from the contingent again in 2014. Are we going to get same-sex marriage in Vietnam before we get uh, some tolerance yes. there in California? As Ireland, as you know, is far more LGBT friendly than the Irish St. Patrick's Day Parade here in New York. I brought this up to one of the St. Patrick's Parade co coordinators in New York, and he said, Ireland, they're liberals. <laughs> 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 They've had it with them. No, no, you know, the old country, the old sod, as they say. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, and there was a commemorative moment this weekend. Uh, there are a couple of activists uh, who are Californian but uh, are starting something called the Friend Movement, which is an anti-bullying uh, organization. And they staged a march, for, they walked from Chicago to New York, almost a thousand miles, and every mile they planted a purple ribbon in remembrance of someone who'd been bullied. And when they got here, or into New Jersey, they were joined by Tyler Clemente's mother and brother to walk across the George Washington Bridge, which is where Tyler uh, committed suicide. Yes. And it's the first time that Tyler's family members had been on the bridge since that happened. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very, and they had quite a crowd that was marching across the bridge. And they the have bridge. a foundation in his name now yeah. that they're working against bullying as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to congratulate Southampton New York uh, High School, which canceled its last football game because there was a homophobic bullying incident in the locker room. And the school administration said, uh, uh, that's it. No football game for you. The season is over. We will not tolerate this kind of behavior. Uh, two students held down another student on the floor and got on top of him and simulated sex with him. and. 
Wow. Uh, you know. Uh, a lot of bullying in sports. There was a cover story in the Times Magazine this week about that guy Mike Rice at Rutgers, who uh, was the coach who called uh, everybody faggot, and there was the uh, threw basketballs news. at them and choked them. And well, he's in rehab. I mean, well, he got he he's working with Glisten. Uh, the Gay he Lesbian is. Straight Educators Network. He's, he's taking all this anger management stuff. He he's trying still to get sounds over it. pretty I, aggressive. I, I, I started the story, and it's it, he's still coaching, you yeah. know, like uh, volunteer-wise. And he calls, says one of the kids, "Come on, you're not a ballerina." Well, that's part of the problem, Mike. Yeah. Take it easy on that kind of stuff. Uh, 2020 did an interview with him too. He's obviously he's written a book, and he's on a uh, a little tour, well, and he he's a uh, he's a hothead. I, I, but I, but he seems to be taking some steps to come around. And you know, one of the quotes in the story was, uh, "Hey, a gay kid coming out at that age—that's real courage." I mean, he he recognizes that now, and, sort and of. I think I don't think he's going to be calling people. He may be. Okay, but people. what is the other real uh, sports gay story this week? Oh, uh, the golf story. No. no. What's that? Well, your friend uh, within Minnesota. Oh, Katie Brenny on uh, her civil lawsuit against the University of Minnesota for sexual orientation discrimination has taken place over the last week. Uh, as we tape, the trial is uh, winding up. It's very brutal, you know. Oh, she was she was hired to be the golf women's coach golf and be coach. women's golf coach, and the, when they realized that she was a lesbian, this is what's alleged. They basically gave her a desk job and kept her away from the women, wouldn't let her travel with the team. Don't uh, talk to the team. Yeah, I mean, this was a guy named John Harris. <laughs> yes, who was a former pro golfer yep. or is a pro golfer and wanted his son-in-law to coach the team. And uh, and that oh, here's the here's the great thing the son in law gets on the stand and says, uh, John, uh, you know, you can't call me homophobic. I have a lesbian mother. Uh, but, you know, I don't think John even knew I had a lesbian mother. He's his father in law. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, John Harris's daughter and this guy, who didn't tell John they were dating until they got married, <laughs> uh, didn't want to tell him because the guy had a lesbian mother. Uh, what more proof do you want? Correct. But we'll see what uh, happens with the trial. No, John Harris they, says you're defaming me. Yeah, well, he's left the school. Let him sue. Go ahead, sue me. Uh, no, the story I was referring to comes from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> no, no, I will go ahead. <laughs> well, one of the characters is a woman who was married to a former pro football player, Cordell. Incognito. Cordell Stewart, <laughs> who was a very big time football player, yeah, and nice. but he was very controlling on the show, and he was always telling her exactly what to do and where to be and how to behave, and he was really something. So then he throws her out and says, "I'm divorcing you," and she comes on the she's on the show and she says, "Well, you know, everyone tells me that Cordell is gay." <laughs> And they pull and this on now, the show. Yes. And he What does he say? He says, I'm 100% man. I'm not gay. That's what Ronald Reagan said about Ron Jr. when he yeah. became a ballerina. <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah. Oh, we know he's all man. Well, that's not what we're asking you. Yeah, exactly. Ron. Yeah. Uh, they're not mutually exclusive. Ronald. All right. All let's right. move on to international let's go to, Well, we start again with Russia. Uh, we told you about all the protests against uh, this Russia investment forum in New York. There was one at the Princeton Club a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and there was another one scheduled for November 18th. And the keynote speaker was the president of the American Bar Association, James Silkenat, uh, and uh, he has pulled out uh, as uh, over the protests. Uh, we've hit a home run on this. The, uh, we showed up at the Princeton Club, big banners outside, uh, people inside yelling at them, and, and there he got is, them James Silkenat. Yeah. So then we, the, they're having their second one, and uh, and we we the city of New York is a sponsor. We call up the mayor's office and say, uh, what do you mean the city of New York is sponsoring a, a forum by Russians to get the U.S. to do business? And they there? say, oh, we're not doing that. We just sent them a nice letter yeah, welcoming yeah, them. We say that to everybody. Yeah. We said that to all the girls. And we told them to withdraw that notice from their website, which they sort of do. No, and, they did finally. Yeah, and but they, they left withdrew the letter, the, and they finally withdrew that too. Uh, okay, and uh, and then we say, well, you know, uh, what about this guy Silkenat, the president of the American Bar Association, keynote speaks uh, speaker? So, uh, uh, Bert Leatherman, a gay activist who's a lawyer who happens to be in Brazil at the moment, starts a Change.org petition that 
immediately gets hundreds of signatures. Mr. Andy Hum of the Gay City News calls up Mr. Silkenat and says, what the hell are you doing keynoting this uh, He conference? says, you know, I, I think I'm just going to talk about uh, gay rights in Russia. <laughs> So I said, okay. So I wrote that down, and that's what he's going to do for my story. And then he calls me back. At, uh, his his uh, spokesperson calls me back an hour later and says, uh, he's not he's not doing it. <laughs> he's just not going. And so we're, we're very not, and, the, and the whole idea is to make Russia toxic until they get rid of these laws more to on, shun them. More on in a second on what's the latest happening there. But there the, ain't nothing the to talk about. Third leg of our triumph on this is the Russian Business Forum is scheduled to take place in the offices of a law firm, uh, Goodwin Proctor, which happens to be in the New York Times building. Has nothing to do with the Times. No, nothing. But we plan a big demonstration outside the uh, law firm on the so day So that's of the not conference. happening either. No, Goodwin Proctor has withdrawn as the host of the Business now Forum. Now we just appeal to you, those of you who are members of the New York Stock Exchange who watch this show, because the Stock Exchange has declared Russia Day again on November 18th, where they'll stand there and ring the bell and all that kind of stuff. That shouldn't be. Right. So we hope to stop that as well. I say right. that as an objective journalist. And uh, the, the Business Forum is supposedly still taking place, but it's gone underground. Uh, and if you happen to find out where that's happening, please let us know, because we would like to show up still with the demonstration. Now, we also got some pushback, because we're very critical of Thomas Roberts of MSNBC, who went off to host the Miss Universe pageant this week and made a lot of stupid comments and uh, so I, I, I'm not backing up uh, on this. I haven't experienced any discrimination here in the beautiful city of Moscow. But, uh, well, but, you're a television star, of course you haven't. No, but let me just quote him and this is why I think he's dumb. He says, I don't think that the LGBT population in Russia or anywhere should be marginalized to that degree. <laughs> well, what degree do you think they should be marginalized to, Thomas? I mean, come on. Well, I think he demonstrated it because I watched the Miss Universe pageant, uh, strictly a journalistic enterprise on my part. <laughs> Uh, and and he, he was says it's for gay men. He was marginalized on that show. Well, uh, it shows exactly what he knows about lesbians. Yeah. Uh, he was marginalized on that show. I think he said a total of ten words in two hours. He well, said he just stood there like a cardboard figure. He had nothing to say. It's like or the time do. they made James Franco the host co-host of the Oscars. Uh -huh. Now uh, he also lauded gay activists for educating people and says that homophobia is an international problem. It's not unique to Russia. Well, that's again minimizing this horrific thing that's exactly. happening in Russia. And Russia is, by the way, it's very big <laughs> and powerful. It matters a lot more than some of these little places. You know, I, I, you know we're, we're concerned yeah. about it everywhere and we talk about it everywhere. Uh, but we Russia certainly is a do. big deal. You're not telling us anything, Thomas. All right, let's tell you about some of the uh, developments. In Russia, a newspaper editor was arrested and his paper could be fined because he published an interview with a gay teacher who had been fired. Uh, this editor has now been uh, charged with violating this propaganda law because he used a quote by the teacher that said, my very existence is proof being gay is normal. So the, uh, the case against him says that, th that that quote is contrary to the laws of logic and will lead children into believing that serial killers are normal too. Uh, they could fine him 6,000 bucks and close his paper. Yeah. This is bravery. His name is Alexander Suturin. Yes. Uh, Brave guy. Yes, very. Just yeah. for writing that story. Mm -hmm. Imagine um, what would happen to us <laughs> in Russia. Yeah, well, you wonder about how this law plays out. That's, a, that's a, the minor version, as opposed to uh, all the people getting shot and beaten up. Uh, Russia did apologize for the harassment and detention of the Norwegian journalists who they uh, detained six So now six they're going times. after Russian journalists. Yeah. Now, you may have seen this. It was all over the Internet. A, there was sort of a more dramatic and we, we could argue strange pr protest in Red Square. A performance artist, Pyotr Pavlevsky, uh. he protested Russia b basically becoming a police state by nailing his testicles to a cobblestone in Red Square. It's his third self-mutilation protest. But, you know, uh, during the Vietnam War, a lot of monks set themselves on fire. That's true. I mean, the point, the point is, it is a dire situation. It is. And it, this is obviously ext extreme. We're not recommending you try it at home. 
but uh, it shows you how bad it is over there. They are certainly on a PR campaign. Putin is going to the Vatican next week to meet with the Pope on November 25th. We may have something to say about that. Uh, the, they, uh, the Sochi people uh, appeared on the Today Show, and uh, hallelujah, Matt Lauer actually asked them tough questions about discrimination yeah. and free speech. And they said, of course, oh, everything's fine, no problem, don't worry. Uh, but of course, uh, people there must follow the IOC <laughs> rules about no demonstrations. Well, uh, Twelve senators, uh, U.S. senators, told the IOC president that they don't trust the vague promises of safety in Sochi. Absolutely not. And the U.N. went through its little exercise of uh, okaying this Olympic truce, which is nonsense. Uh, but they did something they've never done before, which is they put a note on this uh, to Moscow saying that uh, they must promote social inclusion without discrimination at the Olympics. Right. And uh, five major groups in, over there in Russia, including Pussy Riot and the Russian LGBT Sports Federation, issued a whole series of things. I think I'll send this out in my email. These are kinds of things that they're urging us in the West uh, or East to do yep. to stop this. And it and it's, it's pretty much supports the kind of stuff you're doing in Queer Nation. Absolutely. I went through it to make sure that we were uh, following uh, their guidelines, and we are. But you can write to andyhum at aol.com to get on our email list, and then you'll get uh, supplemental things like this uh, from him in a one email a week. Okay, Cu couple of... Uh... Well, thank you to Peter Tatchell in London, who did a second protest against uh, the conductor, uh, Valerie... Pow. Yeah, Gergiev. Um, and, oh, and the London Symphony Orchestra disavowed Gergiev's uh, views uh, supporting He's their Putin. conductor. Yes. That's very brave. <laughs> very brave. Uh, the, oh, and, and the cops in Russia are finally going after one of the neo-Nazis, or so they claim. Uh, he's left the country. He's in Thailand now. He's been torturing gay men on video. Uh, the New York Times had a very nice little thing. They had reached out to uh, Russian LGBT and said, send us your personal stories. And they said they got 400 from uh, submissions from people in Russia, and they chose eight of them and published them. And if you go to the New York Times website, you can find their story on the personal stories of uh, LGBT okay. Russians. All right. Other international news, let's yep. give them some good news. Okay. Out of Zambia, uh, we have our picture here. The First Lady, Christine Kasiba Sata, called for an end to discrimination against sexual minorities. Now, All Africa, the news site, calls her words astonishing. <laughs> She's a medical doctor. The penalty for homosexual activity in Zambia is 14 years in prison. There are two men on trial now for that. And another is on trial for discussing gay people and HIV on television. The Home Affairs Minister this year said those advocating gay rights should go to hell and said uh, it is not a fit subject for discussion, but the First Lady is discussing it. She said silence around issues of men who have sex with men should be stopped and no one should be discriminated against on the basis of their sexual orientation. Thank you. Uh, the uh, European Court of Human Rights has uh, told Greece that their heterosexuals only civil unions law violates the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, I uh, had an email exchange with Andrea Gilbert, the uh, U.S. citizen who's been living in Greece for many years, who was on this show a few years ago. Uh, she alerted me to this decision. I said, so does that mean Greece is going to have to change its law? And she says there's a huge discussion of that right now in Greece, and uh, she'll keep us informed. Well, Ireland is tr trying to change its law. The prime minister, we have his picture there, Enda Kenny, has come out for marriage equality and will campaign for it in this mid-2015 referendum. The government plans a gay adoption bill before Christmas. 76% of Irish polls said they'll vote for same-sex marriage. So why wait until 2015? <laughs>
Well, you know, uh, well, uh, perhaps you'll like the vote sooner in Croatia. Uh, the parliament there has approved a vote on December 1st, this gay right, December Gay rights 1st. group says it's unconstitutional. Well, the question is, do you agree that marriage is matrimony between a man and a woman? Hmm. I would agree with that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it is. That's that doesn't mean it should be that's limited a, that's to that. That's a true statement. Right. The, the, European, the EU Court of Justice says that LGBTI people are eligible for claiming asylum in the EU and cannot be requested to go home and conceal their sexual orientation, which is what some of these judges are telling them to do. Just shut up about it. That's, uh, yes, and that's been a common occurrence here in this country when these immigration judges of original jurisdiction get these cases. Uh, and there's a lot of activism now around the annual Commonwealth meeting. These are the countries of the British Empire. Which used to control two-fifths of the planet. Well, the activists are pointing out that 41 of these 53 countries still uh, uh, make homosexuality illegal. They honor Queen Victoria, who passed that law, there, the buggery law. Well, there's a new report that's come out that about how this uh, promotes violence and discrimination and all the horrible things happening. It's not just Russia. It's not just these sure. uh, African countries. And, uh, and uh, people have to do something about this. Better news from Luxembourg, uh, well, with the prime minister there, uh, Xavier Bettel, we have his picture there, uh, is become the third uh, prime minister in Europe who's out gay uh, after Iceland and Belgium. His partner is Destiné Gauthier. His uh, vice prime minister is gay as well, <laughs> yeah. so we got a backup. <laughs> He leads the centrist Democratic Party. The, the new prime minister is on the right. His partner is on the left. And he asked his partner if it was okay if I, is it okay if I become <laughs> prime minister? Because they're kind of, you know, private and everything. Well, you know, men here who run for president ask their wives if well, it's okay. He's never hit about being gay, he said, since yeah. he was a teenager. And he said, if you're losing friends because of your sexuality, they're not your friends. Good quote from him. Uh, in Senegal, a cops burst into a birthday party at a restaurant uh. and went straight to the table with five lesbians and arrested them. Clearly, well, they're sitting at a off. table. They're pr prosecuting them under the anti-gay laws about improper sex and things and unnatural acts, which do, do carry five years in prison uh, sentence. They can't afford a lawyer. That's horrendous. And in Egypt, police raided a private party in a suburban area uh, targeting effeminate men. Uh, it was a mixed party, and the men have been subject to uh, quite a bit of abuse. Uh, and in is Israel, uh, a gay group has filed a complaint against a mayor of a town. He's ultra-Orthodox, and he said, uh, none of these things live here, <laughs> meaning gay people. That's not nice. That's not uh, very nice. And if they did, the police can handle it. I am, um, yeah. Okay, we've got about five and a half minutes yeah. left. In Buenos Aires, Argentina, 150,000 people showed up at, for gay pride. Oh, and by the way, the Luxembourg guy, he's going to move up the time timetable for getting same-sex marriage there. So he says. So he says. All right, AIDS news. Well, uh, Breaking news, the HIV Organ Policy Equity Act has just passed the House. It's already passed the Senate. It lifts the federal ban on donation and transplant of organs between people living with HIV, which was implemented in 88. The co-sponsors were the two Malonies from New York and Charlie <laughs> Rangel. Thank you. Uh, 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 in Oh, you know these meetings that are taking place uh, uh, downtown, uh, talking transition here in New York City, the uh, yep. George Soros-sponsored uh, tent downtown? Yep. Well, on November 15th, they're... This is for transition to the new administration. Yeah, they're Merrill. at 3 p.m. They're, they're supposed to be talking about AIDS. This is at 6th Avenue. We don't need Canal. talk. We need action. And we need action on hepatitis C, which uh, receives 3% of the federal funding that AIDS does, but it's now the most common blood-borne infection in the United States and the deadliest. Four million infected with it, four times those infected with HIV. 80% don't show signs for decades but the New York City Health Department is mounting a new campaign to combat it, but not really putting the kind of money necessary for testing and treatment and all that kind of stuff. No, it's more important to give tax breaks to big corporations. 
Uh, we had a very oh. nice and moving uh, ACT UP New York alumni gathering on Sunday. Uh, a lot of storytelling, a lot of uh, emotion, and uh, a real acknowledgement that long-term survivors have some real issues that need to be dealt with. We'll be going into that. If you are an alum of or a current member of ACT UP New York, you can look to, at the ACT UP NY alumni uh, website or Facebook page for more info. Okay. Entertainment news? Yes. Well, that 30 rock star, uh, Malik uh, Pancholi, 39, has come out. Uh, he's been in a relationship for nine years. That's kind of out. Um, he has played gay characters on Weeds and Whitney, uh, but he's in the Out 100, and he's also the voice of Sanjay in Nickelodeon, Sanjay and Craig. Uh, Fun Home, the Alison Bechtel play, which I'm going to see again this weekend because it's so good, may be moving to Broadway. That's oh, the, wow. uh, the rumor, not... Sure yet. It you got, might want to see it at the public theater before it closes there on December 1st. It got rave reviews, but you, uh, and I don't know if you can get a ticket, but the best thing I've seen all year is all that fall, a uh, Beckett, Samuel Beckett radio play in a stage version. There's Michael Gambon and Eileen Atkins, What More Do You Need to Know? But it's a beautiful uh, play, Irish existentialist play, very hilarious, 59 East 59th. And no matter where you are, on Sunday, I think at November 18th, is that Sunday? Uh, HBO. No, 17th is Sunday. 18th okay, is Monday. Monday, Monday uh, November 18th on HBO. Whoopi Goldberg presents Mom's Mabley, uh, and it will talk about her as a cross dressing. Uh, uh, performer, oh. a lesbian, uh, a lesbian who wore a lot of male clothing. So that'll be part of the I mean, mom's maybe. They wouldn't have the Russian forum on the Lord's Day. <laughs> uh, a new play, I got a couple of pictures of this, Fix Me Jesus by Helen Sneed at the Abington Theatre Company. It's a comedy about Texas politics in the 60s and in the 80s. Uh, about a young political operative named Annabelle trying to be true to her values and find the perfect dress in Neiman Marcus <laughs> in the dressing room. Uh, but her salty reactionary grandmother, played by Lisa McMillan, is really a standout in that show. Everyone is telling me to see, and I will see momentarily, Reaching for the Moon, the new movie about Elizabeth Bishop and her 15 yeah. years in Brazil with her uh, lesbian lover, who I didn't realize already had a lesbian lover. Uh, so I, evidently there were three of them. This was in the 50s. Uh, Chris Cooper, our uh, favorite sub, is high on it, as well as other friends of mine who've seen and it. They're making a movie version of Terrence McNally's Gay Jesus play, Corpus Christi, which is due this summer. The right wing is trying to prevent its release. <laughs> I'm sure they are, but they've gone after everything uh, hey, like this. go see the play. It ain't that <laughs> controversial. It's very reverent as far as I'm concerned. And I was disappointed. And there's a festival of a movie festival of documentaries in uh, New York City this weekend. Uh, these festivals, it's very hard to figure out what to try to go see. But we were alerted to one called Exposed, playing on November 15th. It's about the new burlesque scene uh, in New York with a lot of uh, queer stars and icons. Uh, uh, we're told it's got a tremendous reception overseas, but the U.S. distribution is going to be tough because there's a lot of straightforward nudity and sexuality. So you might want to catch it at Doc NYC. The movie is Exposed, and we will see you next week. Okay. We got we have a few seconds there? We can still keep talking? Well, I, see I don't some know. Time. The credits have rolled. Talk. Well, all right. Well, you know, we had Dwayne Brown on last week from Jamaica Anti-Homophobia Day, and we heard from our old friend Colin Robinson that uh, good things are happening in the Caribbean, and we will be reporting on them in the coming weeks and months. Absolutely. All the news right here on Gay USA. See you next week. Bye-bye.